Good morning, guys. Today we're going to be going over a different type of video. So it's going to be a matchup tier list for Talon. So I've been asked and requested for a, for a long time to do this, and uh, here it is. So I put all the mid lane champions into this, you know, from S to D tier, and I'm going to be explaining why I put them in a certain category, and then explaining how you can win and overcome certain matchups. So let's go ahead and start. So S. Auction is very hard champion uh, to play against just because of the fact that he has a range advantage and a damage. Uh, at low six, it does change, however, so you can look for a solo kill on him. But if you don't actually end up getting a lead, it's just throughout the whole game, you're just going to suffer. But later on, obviously, you're going to have that advantage where you can actually end up one shotting him because he's an ADC. So that's the reason why he's here. Basically, throughout the whole game, it's going to be very hard to play against him. LeBlanc is the same thing. She has a uh, range advantage, she chooses when to go in and out. She has her W to you know, go in, and then whenever you Q, she can just literally go back to her W, and then it either cancels your W, I mean your Q, or you just you know, jump into her wave, and then you'll just end up losing. You will say if you run up into her like, melee, she could just press like, E on you and CC you. It's very hard. Rumble, uh, you can never basically run up into Rumble. He just has he just out damages you early on, and then into the mid game where he just buys Zonyas and Tabais, and it's just a very difficult matchup. And yeah, his team fighting is pretty good too. So that's why I put him in S tier. Uh, we don't, I don't really see him all often, but whenever I do play against him in mid lane, very annoying. So Nico, as you can, there's like a common theme with the first four. They just have a lot of range and they just out damage you and are super annoying. You can't walk up to the farm and you're just going to have a hard time. And then she's just going to be able to, like in team fights, get a five man ult, which is super annoying. So. Uh, next champion we have on the list is Pantheon. So with Pantheon, she, oh, she, he is a bruiser that, you know, can basically block your damage, your passive, and just has a CC kit. And whenever you jump into him, if you ever jump into him, he can either CC you, block your damage, or get, get a melee Q off, uh, you know, crit you basically. So it's a very hard matchup. Later on though, you do outscale, but you need to go conquer in this matchup. Uh, going at HQ, I don't find any success. So that's my uh, that's my take. So that's S tier. So on the A tier, this is gonna be like the next hardest matchup. So basically, what this means is, if you're going against these champions, it's still not a very good time. Uh, you can even argue like Ari could be here, but uh, there's ways around playing around these champions that I have down here. So or there's either item the ways to isomize or ways to play around it. So that's why it's in B tier. So anyway, so let's continue with the A tier. Corky, it just got buffed, uh, did get nerfed after, but still very strong. Uh, if you tank his E, he just reduces all your, shreds your armor and res magic resist, and basically take a lot of damage. You can't ever walk up, but at level 6, it becomes very easy. But the early game is very annoying, so you could argue he's in B tier, but his early game is very strong. So that's the reason he's here. Syndra, you can basically, uh, I would say... Um, I guess, I guess if I put Syndra here, then Ari should also be around here. Because they're very similar champions. Uh, but basically, with Ari and Syndra, what they do is just... They can hold their E and make the game very difficult. You can never basically jump on them. Uh, as they can just either charm you or just stun you from Syndra's E. So, it's very difficult. And uh, they obviously have the range advantage, which they can spam their Q off cooldown. Uh, and Ari can just, you know, use her W, Q, etc. And just keep their distance. And then Ari can even kite you with his ult, her ult. But anyways, uh, we're back to the Syndra. That's basically it. Um, if it's a good Syndra, it's quite hard and annoying to play against. And she scales very well. She can go Zonyas later on. But at level 6, very, you know, it seems like a recurring thing where Talon can just always, uh, at level 6, look for a solo kill on the champions. But until then, you're going to have a very hard time. The Vex, um, his, her passive actually works very well into Talon because if, whenever you use a dash, so if Talon was to flip over a wall or Q onto a minion or Q onto a Vex, she'll get her passive, um, which gives her that extra damage and uh, extra auto attack range as well. So it's super hard and she has super great range and she can also buy Zonyu. So not a good matchup throughout the whole game, um, but similar to Zoe, uh, I'll put them together. Okay. Um, they're quite squishy, right? So if, if, if they ever use a charm, like, as, as, like some Ari, or Syndra uses a stun, or she uses, like, she doesn't have a stun, you can see by the bar, she has under her HP bar, then it's super easy to kill her. That's the plus side. But, you know, farming and everything is going to be very hard. So the same thing with Zoe, so I won't really cover that. But yeah, whenever 
she just has a greater range and she can just CC you. Uh, but she's very squishy. So this these champions become very easy. Like it becomes C tier, D tier later on into the game. But in the beginning, it's very hard. So that's the reason they're here. Lucian is obviously, you know, a known champion for the early game where his passive is very strong, procs at PTA very easily, outranges you. But level six, um, if you're not too behind, you can always just one shot these type of champions. But if you start falling behind 20 CS, let's say Lucian has 60 CS and you have 25 CS, they have tab eyes, they have damage, uh, and you get a good opening on them. You're still not going to be able to one shot them because you're so behind. They also have armor, and that's the reason why they're in this tier list. They just become very hard very quickly if you don't get a lead or get a gank. And it's basically impossible to get a lead by yourself into these matchups unless they just take turret shots or they mess up. So that's that. Renekton, obviously, it's basically similar to Pantheon, but I think it's a bit easier. Um, but obviously it's still an A tier, it's very hard. Uh, he has a healing, he has a stun as well. You can't, if you if you go into melee, like if you do your combo and he does his combo, he will just win outright. He's also just tank kidding you. But later on you do, um, I would say you do outscale him and in team fights, you're just gonna be more useful because you could just always one shot the ADC when whilst Renekton is gonna be a bit harder to navigate. So, uh, you know, until early to mid, I think Renekton has the advantage, uh, but you do need to go Conqueror, okay? So make sure to go Conqueror. Uh, Cassio difficult, uh, you know, just spams her abilities, and if you ever jump onto her, she can just literally kite you by pressing her mi miasma, miasma, a W ability, and uh, she can she literally can buy cloth armor, become very tanky by tier, spam her abilities. Uh, I do recommend going tier, and I do feel like Cassio just outscales you throughout the whole game, so that's the reason she is here. Um, so like for example, Corky right or Syndra, they outscale you, but there's ways like. You can actually kill them. Same thing with Cassio, but it's just gonna be very hard, especially because they're gonna buy like Seraphs and then Zonias. Um, so yeah, they scale very well as well. Victor, super annoying, crazy range. Um, I don't see her, I don't see him often, so that's really good. Um, but yeah, you can just go execute or phase rush into this. The reason I go phase rush into certain matchups, like I'm listing, because it just allows you to do a trade and not take too much damage. So for example, with Cassio. If you were to just jump into Cassio, you're gonna as you're running out, she's gonna be able to hit her E like four, five, six times by the time you get out, right? So that you're gonna end up losing a trade, even if you did initial like initially a lot of damage. So yep, Victor, a lot of damage. Hell ranges you can buy Zonias as well. Um, but uh, I think later on it's not too it's not too hard. It's it's, it's okay. Uh, but just the early to mid game is kind of annoying. Yon, uh, quite strong. His shield is super annoying. Um, basically makes it impossible to win any trade. Also, you don't win out on uh, long trades either. So you need to go for that early game trades. Uh, even then, if he has his W, you lose that as well. So that's why he's here. And then obviously he scales pretty good. He's basically an ADC, but melee. So that's, that's why he's here. Um, he also can get prio, doesn't have mana. You know, you might run out of mana as you farm with your W. But with phase, you need to go kind of phase rush. You can go conquer, but I do find out that you know even if you were to fight him out, yeah, he will just win out on long trades. So that's not going to help you. Try to do as much as you can before he gets berserkers. Is my advice. Yeah, twist of fate. Uh, basically, can stun you, has a range advantage, and his ult just reveals you in your invis, even in late game. So I think if twist of fate plays very well and he doesn't get ganked or he just positions very well, there's not really much you can do, and he will just close out the game by out, you know, by basically keeping pressure in mid lane. Having prior, ulting two sides, and that's pretty much it. Tristana, basically a similar thing where he doesn't have a CC, she doesn't have CC, but uh, what she does have is her push. She can basically keep you on the turret, right? And as Talon, what you want to do is you know be able to keep, you know, you're not very strong late game, right? So you want to have, you know, I want to apply some pressure, get a lead early on, or early to mid-game. But you're not gonna be able to do that if Twist if Tristana is just basically bombing your turret. And you know, even if you try to fight hit her, she can just jump away or she can just press R on you. And it's basically annoying. She can just, you know, group with her team. She has the resets. So that's why she's here. But obviously, if you get a lead, it's super easy. You just jump over a wall with your R and then you just combo her and she's dead. Right. But getting to that point is a hard part, you know. That's what I've always said, even when I'm coaching. If I if I was to get get my account to 10-0 and I log out 
you know, you log in, it's going to be kind of easy for you to just, you know, snowball the game yourself because I already got you to that, you know, fed part, right? That's the hard part with talent, I would say. Like with Syndra, you can just scale, right, for free. Just, you know, as long as you're like, you know, one zero zero or good CS, you're going to do completely fine. With talent, you know, if you're just chilling, just AK farming, uh, I feel like there's just 20 times better champions uh, that can just impact the map way more. So anyways, this video is going quite long, but uh, uh, hopefully you guys uh, can appreciate it. Um, if you've gone this far and you're still watching, then that just means you just really want to learn. So that's good. Um, okay, so Jace. So he basically outranges you, can also, you know, he gets armor whenever he goes into melee range and he can hit you away. Um, he basically controls the lane and does a lot of damage. And I think he's just a stronger 1v1 champ. This picture is very bad quality, but anyways, that's about it. Um, but later on, you can actually solo kill him, but I do think his kit is just better for you know, fighting. Um, you know, Talon's strengths are very different, so that's why he doesn't have a lot of matchups that he wins. Aurelia, uh, you know, his very you know, known champion to be the best one we wanna basically can just heal up once she gets vampiric scepter or whatever or tab eyes she can just buy these items into you she'll out damage you she'll have more sustain than you and yes but obviously your strength is you can jump over walls she can't right or she can if she can dash over but anyways um you want to just be basically avoid the 1v1 unless she you know get takes multiple turret shots because that's what they usually do and then you roam and get advantages that way but in 1v1 uh, you're gonna you're gonna just be sitting on the turret. Okay, if the second you walk up, she's just gonna be doing her jumping stuff, and then you're dead. Okay, and you, uh, I I always think there's like an anti-assassin champion because of her passive, right? It's just super hard to get a lead into. And then once she gets level six, she can just uh, wave clear, get prio. If you walk up, she just Q and then Qs and then E's you, and then you know you take a lot of damage. So, yeah, that champion is just very hard to play against. Uh, it's annoying. You kind of have to play around how she wants to play the lane rather than how you want to play the lane. Uh, I would just rush TM out or try to just you know, get out of this lane as soon as possible. It's going to be very hard if you don't get a gank. Because you, by the time you, or you blow up all your, blow all your sums and ignite and ult, kill her, and then that's her passive, right? And then by the time you can't kill her the second time. So it's very hard, unless you get a gank, right? Um, okay, cool. So we spoke about Ari a bit. Very similar to the other champions. You kind of see how this is going. Um, I'll try and... I, I'll, I'll just go skim over the rest now because I feel like I've gone into detail with a lot of the harder champions. So you kind of you know, see the similarities, right? So Zed, um, he just basically outscales you. is a better assassin in the 1v1. Uh, your advantages are very different. Um, and he can literally just kill you when, like, if he's a good Zed and, you know, you're a good Talon, he has the advantage. He can just kill you whilst you're in your ult. And that's about it. Um, but you have the advantage in the early game with Wayfair. Okay, so Akali has crazy sustain. So if you do a bad trade and she just has Doran Shield and great health regen, she's going to end up just healing up and eventually just, just going to run out of uh, resources, health, mana. And lose out on trade and level six, she can just always kill you. So you need to go hex drinker in this matchup. But she doesn't beat her just because of the fact that you can still solo kill her. Uh, but I'd still give it to her. Like it's kind of easier for her still. Um, and even if she falls behind, she can just come back and solo kill you, even if you uh, if you're really ahead. Brand just you know crazy wave clear, crazy AOE. She, he's gonna be very strong in late game, even if you do kill him. But if he does fall behind and he's you know then he's super useless, you can just farm him basically. Uh, but yeah, that's that's about it. Zelian, uh, here's it. Oh, don't worry. It's it's not like you're gonna solo die to a Zelian, but um, he has like anti talon anti assassin kit, right? So he could slow you. He has a CC, and he could just revive people. So if you were to um, one shot someone, well, before you before you do, you could just ult the person, and then your whole kit's useless, right? So this champion. Um, it's just very annoying to versus a verse, uh, especially in general, but not like not in mid lane particularly. The champion just counters assassins. So. Yeah, so uh, similar to Yon, I think it's just a kind of easier matchup, just because Yon is a bit more updated. Uh, doesn't really have it's easier to proc Yasuo's shield as well, uh, but he does have a wind wall which can block your O and your W, so that's obviously very annoying. 
but I feel like it's more playable. Just go phase rush as well into this matchup. Rice, uh, yeah, like going LHQ, you're not going to one-shot him. He just has a lot of health. He has CC built in, uh, but I don't really see this champion often. But whenever I do, it's kind of annoying. He just wave clears as well. It's like a Nivea, uh, but a bit different, right? Now, Fizz, um, champion, basically, I think it's like a, I don't know, a, lot, a lot of people find trouble playing against Fizz. Uh, it's kind of like Akali, right? They're AP assassins. You need to go Hex Shrinker into this champion. Also, Echo, you need to go AP um, Hex Shrinker. Um, yeah, you can go LHQ into this matchup. You can totally solo kill him. But he, like, like the other ones, he dictates how the lane goes because he can just go on his E. You know, he can dodge your abilities, dodge your ult damage, jump on you whenever he wants, jump out whenever he wants. So that's basically it. But you can just one shot him. You know, but he gets rush Sonya's as well. So, uh, you know, there's, there's parts where you win and there's parts where you start losing. Uh, just that's just like feel, I guess. Swain, um, very tanky, very annoying, has a range of advantage, spams like his Q. Um, you need to go Bruiser against these champion because he just has a lot of health. But it's easier than Rice, in my opinion. But he just pokes you out more. This person just wave clears more. Silas, uh, oh, Talia, actually. Talia, you. Yeah, yeah, you can't really jump because it stuns you uh, and she outranges you. But later on, it's completely fine. Uh, but she might have more impact than you in the early game. So that's why she's here. Silas, you need to go conquer and ignite. Otherwise, you know, you just do your whole combo and then he heals up and then you're completely useless. If you have conquer, you can just keep on auto attacking. Make sure you ignite before his W, his healing. Dub, uh, as you don't see, don't see him often as much anymore. Uh, just crazy range, uh, but you can solo kill him. So that's that. Oriana, uh, one of the annoying champions because of his low cooldown. One of her, like, her, her cooldowns are very low. Like Cassio. Um, but I would say it's kind of easier than Cassio just because you can actually, once you do get on her, she's basically dead. And her damage is not crazy. It's not like she just one shots you once you do a one mistake. It's more like she just burns you out and then you have to take bad recalls. So that's how I see that matchup. Yeah, then, um does a lot of damage, can see ECU, uh, but I don't know, I don't really see her mid lane or anywhere, but it's completely fine this matchup. He also goes on you, so that's kind of annoying, but yeah. Trinomir, obviously, as well, you can't one-shot him, so he just ends up killing you if you play incorrectly, so you just want to go phase rush into this matchup, and you want to just kite him out, make him, you know, get him low, and then... Keep your ult, right? Don't use your ult as a way of killing him, as you can just press R and then he ends up killing you. Uh, so it's more of a feel. I don't find this matchup really too hard, uh, but I don't really play against a mid lane. But if you were to play against a mid lane, he can just go Doran Shield and out sustain you. That's about it. It's meant to be a talent counter. Uh, Vladimir. <clears throat> so with Vladimir, his healing is annoying. And if you don't actually get a solo kill, which is very hard if you're trying to force it, um, he's just going to be able to get to a like, point where he's like level 5, 6, 7 and then at that point he's just going to be unkillable he's just going to keep healing off the minions and you're just going to start ending up running out of resources, you need to go ignite into this matchup <clears throat> but he outscales you obviously uh, the champion's not the strongest at the moment in my opinion, but yeah, his team fight is going to be obviously stronger than yours um, and if you can't really get a lead so your chance of winning this is by impacting the other lanes. <clears throat> so let me drink water because I'm not Wisp. Okay, so um that's about it. Lissandra, you know, and her assassin champ, then just spam her Q again. And then she also self. You're also very like it's a very good champion to set up uh ganks with your jungler. Well with her jungler I guess. So you gotta be careful of that. Um I end up actually always getting a low um but you know i like whenever i go for it like try to go for a solo kill her jungle is always there and then i get cc'd and killed but she's always trying to bait me um some i'd say you know try to kill her if you have vision of the jungler otherwise just try to avoid this lane and just try to get a lead elsewhere because she can just ult herself she can e away and stuff like that and stun you but i, I don't know it's it's a fine champion to go against now so it's obviously the wither is Crazy go phase rush to you know, help you with that. I'm gonna have a video up soon playing against Nasus, so 
but that's when you watch this, obviously. But yeah, um, and he just out sustains you. You don't really have enough damage to kill him. And your bet is similar to Vladimir, right? He heals up, he stacks up, he scales. What do you want to do against these champions is roam and win the game elsewhere. Okay, cool. There are range advantage uh, later on, very easy. If you just flank him, you can easily one shot him. So that's it. Same with Ziggs, crazy range. Flank him in, he's dead. Vagar, same concept. A bit harder, maybe, but um, yeah, I don't really see him that often. Focus, same thing, crazy range, flank, kill him. Away, same thing, crazy range, flank, and kill him. Uh, but laning phase is really annoying to play against this champion. Locked, same thing, just, and then once she's level six, she has one shot waves, and you don't really interact, but you can kill her later on. Nocturne obviously has the magic shield uh, that blocks abilities. And uh, out sustains you and can fear you if you stay on her, stay on him for too long. But I mean, to be honest, when do you ever go against a mid lane to Nocturne? And, uh, Quinn, obviously he can she can cancel your Q. So if you jump on the Quinn, um, she just denies your damage and she just win trades because she outranges you. Okay, Kaiser, this champion basically just. Skills very well, obviously, it's an ADC, but if you ever play against her mid lane, she's probably going to go AP. Her W reveals you, so just in team fights, it's very annoying as well. She also goes Zonyas. Uh, so if you get the late game, late game, it's, it's bad. Uh, early game, it's it's fine. Mid game, she was going to go Zonyas, as I said. You can always kill her mid game. So, you know, once you're level 6 and onwards, it's fine. Later on, it gets harder and harder. Uh, as she positions better. Otherwise, if you're just snowballing, it's fine. Okay, Dinah. It's become a very healthy champion, as in she just has a lot of health. Uh, you can go Hex Drink into these matchups as well, and the Echo, as I mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, you can go Conquer into these or LHQ, or yeah, Conquer or LHQ, I'd say. Um, and that's about it. It's it's fine. She obviously has a better team fighting because of her kit. Echo does a lot of AP damage, scales very well with AP, so you just want to go MR against this champion. That's yeah, completely fine, uh, but he does scale better than you and can take turrets better than you, etc. Uh, Nunu, basically, uh, very easy to kill, but um, he can wave play very quickly, so you just kind of need to match him with the like roams. But it's, he obviously has a bit more movement speed with the W, so that's it. Gang Clank, I haven't seen him in a long time, uh, but uh. He has a range if he's if he's good, he'll spam his Q on you and just heal up and just not let you jump on him. Malphite, obviously an AD counter champion, uh, has a shield, has a lot of armor. Uh, a lot of people go AP as well on him, and even then that's still really good because he can just one-shot you. Um, but my tip is just try to time your R. So whenever he ults you, uh, just press R. So whilst you're CC'd in your R, you're invis, so he can't really auto attack you. But he can still press his E and slam the floor, so it's still annoying. And it can one shot you. And in late game, he's very scary for ADCs. Um, Gragath can cancel your jump, so that's it. And out sustains you as well because he's passive heals. Farmer, same thing. Pokes you a lot. Uh, it's so basically a second support for your for the for his team, which means his ADC is going to be super strong, and he heals up. With his RW, most unskilled champion in the game. I hate whenever she's meta mid lane. Uh, yep. Okay. Cho'Gath heals up as well, um, and then he just actually just literally can press Q on his Q on himself. So if you jump on him, you just get knocked up into the air, and then he silences as well. Uh, so bad matchup. Has a lot of health. Annie self has a stun, has a shield. That's about it. But you know nothing, nothing crazy. I could put her in C tier, but she obviously outrages you and she's good and uh, she, she'll win lane. So, um, okay, so C tier, let's, uh, let's go for these. Aso, Kiana, Smolder, Katarina. I don't think it's annoying, but Pike, Nef Nefiri, and all these champions, you can just basically solo kill. Like a singed, you can't really solo kill, but he just he doesn't have a kill threat on you, basically. And, um, I mean, he can just go armor, but you could just also roam like alongside him. But he's going to be proxy farming, and you can just go Hydra, and then you can just scale with him, and you can just one shot the ADC later on. And I think it's completely fine. The rest of the champions, you could just get a solo kill in early game. 
right? Um, do some crazy stuff flying outside my window. But anyways, yeah, they're like they're assassins basically, as you can see, uh, which is funny because um, like all the champions are very hard to play against. They're not very majority of them are not assassins, and then the champs are very easy to play against are assassins. So that just kind of shows you that assassins are not very strong in the one v one. Um, so yeah, like um, you just one shot one all of these. Kiana basically. We very very weak early, but once she's level six, she can just one shot you herself as well. It's basically the same thing as Talon, but stronger. Once every assassin is level six, they can just get a kill on you, right? So if Fizz hits level six, he just goes all in. Gan gets level six, tries to go all in, uh, but he has a CC. Uh, she has a CC, and you know, win team fights from her ult alone. So that's that. Cassidy don't have to really talk about these champions. They're like scaling champions, as you can tell, uh, except from Galio. Uh, and um, you can just solo kill them before they scale. Cassidy is completely useless if you ever get your jump on her, on him, and there's not a lot of minions. You basically always win the trade, and you can always just solo kill him. And then even after level six, you can just kill him again. Uh, but then later on, later on, then obviously it gets hard once he's like level sixteen. Same people KO kind of, but you can always just kite them, right to KO. Uh, you know, just QW. And then all sack, and then whenever she also serves just R and run away, and then run back in, eat it back in. Galio, the reason this is easy is because you just go conquer, and you know if he just ease into you or whatever taunts you, doesn't really matter. You're not gonna die. You're just gonna auto kill to him, just jump on him, and you win the trade. You just just doesn't have enough enough damage. If you just get fed and he goes full AP, then yeah, it can become annoying, but that rarely happens, and he's not gonna just randomly pick up kills. Uh, so yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, if you're enjoy the video um then go ahead and like and comment down saying what she's going on type let's see karma okay, type karma in the comments if you got this far because I, I doubt anyone's like really watched all the way here but if you have then i really appreciate it guys uh if you haven't joined the discord and i've been i'm gonna be streaming every day at 4 till 10 11 12 whatever or just whatever now i mean i might even stream now it's only three o'clock so, yeah, uh, thanks, guys, and see you guys later. Peace.